Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I'm of the stars. And a, a little bit more on, like, soul wounding timelines and dimensions. Uh, this has to do with your current lifetime, my current lifetime, right? So I have an awareness timeline that keeps shifting and changing to other timelines and to other dimensions, but I'm unaware of that. But it is happening through grace. Grace is trans transporting me or skipping me about amongst the various dimensions and timelines as I go along. Every time I call on the uh, my celestial ascension team, there, a shift is occurring in my timeline and in my dimensions, but to my limited human awareness, it seems like I'm going along on just one timeline, right? And in that timeline, there will be instances of soul wounding, often one accreting upon the other along a similar theme. So, for instance, let me sh let me say, I have like um, an insufficiency of prana in my l on the left side of my body, and and slight, ever so slight insufficiency or imbalance, right? And in in my lifetime, in my early childhood, there were instances of soul wounding and also physical wounding that contributed to that. For instance, hmm. One, three things in my early childhood. Uh, the first was, I, I've mentioned it before, I thought I could fly, right, when I was very young. Why can't I fly? I could remember flying. So I tried jumping down from the roof of our house onto the concrete kitchen porch and when I was very young, first grade, right? And I jumped down and I, I hurt my left, my left ankle. And my the sole of my left foot inside in the middle, and it was I was limping to school for a long time after that. It, it it was the left side was injured. Then soon thereafter, I got a beautiful blue bicycle for Christmas, and and it was my pride and joy. The problem was I didn't know how to to ride it. So, I practiced and practiced and fell down a lot because we had a gravel driveway, you know, that was what I had to, to ride on. And um, uh, one day I was, I, I had a cousin who was six months older than me. He was an incredible grown-up person in my mind. He's about seven. And um, he knew how to ride a bicycle. What can I say? He just knew things. And so he would, for a while, he would ride my bicycle up and down our long country driveway and he would let me ride on the back on the like the kind of the bumper seat on the back uh, wheel and one day and he could you know he was he would show off he would go very fast by my lights and and so we'd be whizzing down the driveway you know the only air conditioning we had in those days on the hot summer days and so we'd be whizzing and the and the wind would be going past and whipping past our hair it was like an amusement ride, you know. <laughs> so, so I was riding one day on the on like the bumper seat, the back wheel, which had like a place to to tie things on. So there was like a place to sit, and and I, my left foot got tangled in the spokes of the left um, of the rear wheel of the bicycle, and and it, and it badly torqued the, that leg. I fell off, and it badly torqued my leg. So there I was limping again. That's the second instance, right? All along the same theme, this has to do with relaxing and repairing the body and so forth on the left side, the left prana. So um, the third thing happened when I was about 13 years old. Uh, the, the, the family had gone to the beach, our favorite beach, Fairhaven, for, this, for the summer, for a beautiful summer day. We had a wonderful time, and we came back. Everybody was grumpy and tired and just wanted to go to bed. And we arrived at home after dark in the family's old station wagon, a very old station wagon with some problems. And one problem was that the parking brake didn't always stay par uh, in park. So um, the, the turnaround, the circular turnaround where we lived, uh, the, the driveway, um, was on a slight slope like that. So, and there was another car parked at the top of the hill. That was the normal car. And so, um, we parked like on a slope like this. Yeah. And everybody piled out of the car and, and 
uh, st and uh, some people started to run into the house and the parking brake slipped off of the car. And my father was in the back with my youngest sister behind the car, getting things out of the car. She was only like two years old at that time. She was a toddler. And my mother and I were on the far side of the car over here, and the car started moving back down the hill. Um, the motor wasn't going, but the force of gravity and the, the like the heavy metal of the car were something to consider. Um, so my father had extraordinarily fast reflexes, incredibly fast reflexes, and he grabbed just in time, grabbed my, my young sister uh, uh, out of the path of the moving car, which has quickly gained acceleration, flung her up over the top of the car, grabbed her up over the top of the car, and saved her life. And my mother uh, had had really slow reflexes compared to my probably normal reflexes. My reflexes were in the middle, halfway between the two, and much faster than most people's, actually. So uh, so I inherited about half of my father's gift. And I was, uh, I the car door on the other side was open, and I tr tried to dive into the car and grab the parking brake and pull it back up. But the car door hit me, and I roll. I was rolled under the car, and um, it rolled over like this under the car. And my left leg was the first leg that was rolled over by the by the by the car wheel, and it was dragged along the ground for a while first. So so there was a third injury to my to my left side, all within the space of the growing up time. Okay. So, so, and that is normal. It's normal for um, soul wounding on one side with which you're born, say a pranic insufficiency on the left side, to attract to itself in this dimension numerous incidents that further the soul wounding. In my case, this is just a physical example, but there are also um, uh, astral, like emotional snags that, that are... Uh, embedded in our electromagnetic fields, in our etheric net, uh, like insufficiencies of the light that are carried through incarnations because of the density of this dimension, which results in this kind of soul wounding, which is not to say that because we have like soul wounding that we're inferior in any way to anyone else. In fact, Soul wounding, a lot of soul wounding is often characteristic of the light workers who have been on earth for a really long time and accumulated a lot of dings and scratches in their etheric nets. All this is in the process of healing right now, as you all know. All the light is coming in and fixing all of this because in the greater light of these times of the great awakening, it's impossible for these dings and uh, like nicks and scratches to exist anymore. They are simply like flooded with light. The uh, axiotonal lines uh, uh, are flooded with light and the etheric net plumps up and is fixed little by little. Then the light flows from the etheric net into the physical form and all that is fixed as well. So this is something to look forward to this year, right? But in the meantime, we have the long age of darkness, and I'm trying to explain why all this occurred. The more incarnations we experience in this dimension, the more we have trouble with the etheric net. So the light workers who volunteered first are the ones with the most soul wounding. Mm -hmm. the, in their awareness, they are concentrating on the light, not on the darkness. That's the definition of their occupation, their soul occupation through this long siege of the dark. Now the Great Awakening has occurred, and it is time for the light workers to see the nicks and dents and scratches in their etheric nets. They need to allow those to be fixed. They are no longer the leaders of humankind. Instead, the light leads humans into into the greater awareness of themselves. Our Ascension teams are there to help us with that. Each person has their own Ascension team, you see. So we need to give people the liberty to, to find that help, that, they, that divine help that is there for them. We need to step back now as light workers. We need to be retired. 
We need to have a new soul mission. All right. There are those of our friends in high places, right, who are waiting for us to wake up to this. There's a welcome committee beyond compare awaiting our return to that which we are, the return of our awareness to the greatness that we are. But we need to detach ourselves from this scene. You know, the source of all that is, before creation, that we are. Before creation, we create through God's through aligning with God's heart and mind and will. We are that. We create this. Right? We need not create the dark anymore. So now back to the topic of soul wounding and the long age of darkness, right? We have this beautiful shining etheric net, and it expresses our optimum timeline and dimension. And it's that which the light workers have been concentrating on as actually who they are. This has gotten gnarled up and mixed up with personality until we reach beyond personality to at least our celestial team and from there possibly to the divine itself. We, we are stuck down here uh, with this one theoretically close to perfection dimension and timeline where we are light workers, right? But within that, within all that, are all of the encapsulated electromagnetic field anomalies that represent our soul wounding, our nicks and dents and scratches, right? These must also be resolved to the light. When we experience an interval between incarnations, uh, an interval of soul learning um, with our celestial teams help. Um, the electromagnetic anomalies, which, uh, which represent our soul wounding as a, a audio-visual clips that I've spoken of before, short, like, repeating clips of soul wounding experiences that can't be resolved right now. Experience that time as separate uh, expressions of life in the hell worlds or purgatory worlds or in limbo. So, so we here on earth in physical form call those ghosts or fractals. Okay, so so we here on earth in physical form sometimes see the ghosts or soul wounding encapsulated audiovisual clips of people who have passed on over and over again and like in one place. We've seen this in movies where there's uh, somebody that's, I think I saw a movie where someone's, it was during the times of slavery, maybe on a plantation and a young child tried to evade being killed by the people in charge of the plantation by climbing up into a chimney and the owner of the plantation knew he was there and set a fire in the chimney, you know. And, and that clip repeated over and over again in that mansion, you know. A highly injurious um, occurrence had, had happened, both for the person that set the fire and for the person that was hiding. And it just could not be resolved. It just could not be resolved. So, so there was a fractal of that, those souls, both souls, after they passed on, that stayed in the hell worlds and projected that audiovisual clip image into the physical world for a, for a long, long time. Now, if this were true rather than a fictional instance, uh, those souls, the soul both of the murderer and of the child who was killed, would need to be in the heaven worlds, learning from their celestial teams 
for many, many long years, maybe a thousand years in the normal course of things. So then at the end of that time, the, uh, the, uh, the electromagnetic fields, uh, anomalies representing their soul wounding, would be reinstituted in the air etheric nets, which create their, their physical bodies in their new incarnation. It's still not cleared, still needing to be cleared. So, so as I understand it, that is how that, is how that mechanism works of karma. You can find out a lot more about the, the workings of karma. Uh, not, not visual images, but the workings of karma and the karmic law from uh, the studies of theosophy, the theosophical school, and from the Buddhists. But, and, and it is a very interesting study. I've been studying up on it. Um, but... Right now, in the time of the shift, the understanding of the mechanism of karma is not as important as it used to be because all karma is dissolving. Okay, karma is like unraveling and dissolving. And so it's a transformational experience now. It's the experience of divine grace, uh, solely, really. Actually, it always was that experience, but, but now we have the grace to understand what's going on. So anyway, uh, so we have these like little ghostly images that are like like space junk in our energy field right now, right? And, uh, and they need to be cleared. If we descend into those experiences, we experience something like the catatonic state described in the time travel movie Dimensions, that we, we can experience that audiovisual clip. If we do this from the space of our uh, heart's energy, the, the like center of our electromagnetic field, and link that powerhouse of energy with the um, audiovisual clip, what happens is a sudden burst of light in which the, the, the encapsulating boundaries of the, of the soul wounding clip are dissolved and the, um, the whole scene plays out. You know, it plays out. We can hear and see everything that happened. It plays out in our minds and resolves to love. You know, resolves into, in electromagnetic terms, it, it merges with the rest of it, the energy flow of our electromagnetic field which is a pretty cool experience. So then hypothesizing that once we pass on again uh, and we're getting our soul learning in the, in the, in the heaven worlds, uh, down in the, in the hell worlds or in the purgatory worlds, that particular scene will not be playing out again and could not be projected into the 3D reality so as to affect, uh, adversely affect the people still in incarnate form there. Now I've talked quite a bit about the Ascended Masters and how all of this about soul wounding and so forth affects their followers right now. And I'd just like to just conjoin or sub in uh, this um, this topic with the topic that I've been discussing today. Uh, as I understand it, the Ascended Masters are, are, are light workers who have concentrated very thoroughly on the light. And, and in the day, age of darkness, when we had not the, the consolidated help of our Ascension teams or a direct um, link to the incoming light, which is represented on the physical plane only, in that only in that third dimension, by the light, the way that the universe has changed and turned so that we can absorb the light of the star, the central sun. But there, that, that light is coming in the physical realm. That's only the physical way of saying what is really happening in all 12 dimensions right now, you see. So to get back 
to the topic. The Ascended Masters were like super mega light workers. Yeah. And though they concentrate, and their light was very bright, they concentrated solely on the light of God and so forth, and consequently had many followers who were trying their best to remember who they really were in terms of light and love and joy. The very fact that they were in incarnate form here in the third dimension made it impossible, impossible for them not to have darkness in their um, incarnate aspect as well. There were, uh, there was a very great light, and there were very few, uh, like encapsulated instances of soul wounding. But those that were there were exceedingly dark. They, because they had to counterbalance the light here in this dimension and in the fourth dimension. So after these uh, ascended masters passed on, the portion of them, the, the atypical opposing oppositional force of darkness uh, very dense and deep, deep darkness as soul wounding that was encapsulated in their etheric nets um, descended to the hell worlds uh, where, uh, where it played out during this shift as instances of extremely severe soul wounding amongst the followers of those ascended masters unless they concentrate solely on the heaven world existence of the major portion of the soul of of these beings, all right. In um, in the various religions, we've been seeing uh, instances of like iterative instances of soul wounding, same kind of soul wounding, expressing themselves as the followers who are attracted to a particular religion or philosophy will have in common certain soul wounding aspects uh, that relate to the the deep darkness uh, encapsulated in their in their ascended master. So these have been popping, you know, they may be, lead to acting out or it could just be that in a particular religion uh, there have been flare ups of of like vivid waking dreams, recurring vivid waking dreams in the followers of a particular group that represent this tiny pinpoint of extremely intense dark, dark light, antimatter light, expressing hatred or fear or like that, uh, that, that was embedded in the etheric net of their ascended master when he passed on. So the thing to do is not to concentrate on that, unless through the aspect of, of the heart. We, our own hearts, can transform that life. If we, uh, if we say to the vision of that deep darkness that comes up, um, even though it be from the Ascended Master, we say to that vision of, of inchoate darkness, May you be blessed with unconditional love. May you be blessed with unconditional love. So in that way we grant liberation actually to the ascended masters. Yeah. They've been having a very tough time of it because uh, their soul wounding no matter how small has gotten glommed up with the soul wounding of all their followers, the more followers they have, the worse off they are, have been until now. This is finally resolving in the light, thank God. So, so in the meantime, whether you participate in a group or not, try not to get, this is what I do, I, I go to groups, I enjoy the presence of other people, but I do my best not to get involved with their personalities. I don't want to descend in my awareness below the, um, the veil of personality and ego. I, I need to be higher. I need to be at least in the causal realm 
where we can see all the ramifications of 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 the playings out of the of the threads of darkness in the dimensions and the timelines, you know, and if we if we keep our awareness up there, at around the eighth, the seventh, and eighth chakras, at least to the eighth chakra, above the head, right? Then, then all we need to do is ask. We ask if if we want to know if it's safe to go to a certain place, say a certain park or a certain part of town or we or we want to whether we want to know or if we want to know whether it's safe to take a particular airline trip or go to a particular event all you have to do is ask and and we are taken by our ascension team to that place and that time in no time without any like lapse of time there's time is not a like an aspect of what occurs in terms of knowing. So immediately we will know. We will know, is it safe or not safe? And that's an important thing in this time because we want to stay in form, in physical form, through this process of, of awakening. And so, so that's one aspect stay safe. But another aspect is, how can I best follow my heart? How can I best achieve my soul mission during this time? And and those are questions that can be asked of our team as well. We can say, optimize timelines and dimensions so that I may best follow my heart during this time. Just like that, it's done. right? It could say, optimize timelines and dimensions so that I may best fulfill my soul missions my optimized soul missions at this time. You ask that, it's done. <laughs>